Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome back to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. So it's now been out for four days and the servers after the initial teething problems are slowly starting to settle down, although I am aware not for everybody. The one thing though that I really wanted to delve into as we did when Flight Simulator 2020 came out was of course the graphic settings and what was going to be the best to give us the great visuals that we're hoping to achieve, but while still maintaining a steady FPS and performance. Now, I'm not running the world's best PC, far from it. I have a Ryzen 7 3700X processor, GeForce RTX 3060, 32 gigabyte of RAM, and because we're streaming as well, I usually only play in 1080 resolution. So they are my settings and the hardware. And of course, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, there are literally dozens of things that can affect your performance and affect the visuals. Things like the amount of weather that is being injected into the sim, whether you're in a photogrammetry area, the texture quality, the amount of traffic that has been downloaded and injected into the sim. This is New York, of course, and these are the live maritime vehicles that we can see, some with some awesome names as well. I love having this feature in the sim. I think it's really nice, but of course it all affects performance. So what we're going to try and do in this video is get you the best visuals while still having a nice smooth simulator to play with. Now, there is one big caveat, of course, and that is that this simulator relies on your internet speed and of course the Azobo servers. Nothing I can do about that but let's see how good we can make it okay then so this is how i'm going to conduct the test starting looking at downtown manhattan obviously this is where from the past we've known that the photogrammetry in new york is probably one of the most gpu intensive parts of the microsoft flight simulator world at the moment i have set the settings to the default medium setting the only online streaming that I've got going on in terms of traffic is the maritime traffic, which is why you can probably see a little uh, boat down on the bottom right hand corner swimming in circles. Happy to leave that on though because realistically I would like to have that as a feature when I'm flying, but obviously usually my flying is done on VATSIM, so not too bothered about having AI air traffic running around. As you can see, we're holding quite steady here at around 60, 61 FPS. That is really good. And to be honest, this is far better than I would have ever got in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. You'll probably also notice as well that we have got clear skies. We've cleared all of the weather, so that can't interfere at the moment. What I'm trying to do then is go through the settings to find out which are the ones that are going to cause us the biggest performance hit. So if I straight away just change this to the default high setting across the board, let's have a look what happens. So there you go, immediately we lose 15 FPS. Not to be unexpected, obviously we have literally upgraded everything up a level, but do we actually need everything set to high? Let me just push my system one stage further and go to ultra, see what that does. And there you go. Again, not unexpected. I'm only on a 3060, so we would expect to lose quite a few FPS. And we're holding about 33, 34. Again, to be fair, this is probably better than how it would look in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Now, with this setting, obviously, it looks beautiful. It's great, but we don't get the smoothness of our performance, which obviously that's what we want. So now let's throw in some different things and see what actually affects the performance and try and find the balance between the good graphics and the good performance. So what I'm going to start by doing is obviously turning down the global rendering quality all the way back to medium that's where we saw the 60 fps but then we're going to try and increase a few things as well for the moment i'm going to leave this on taa render scaling and uh, sharpening etc vsync at the moment is turned off and the nvidia reflex low latency also turned off as well let's just have a look at the rendering quality so the terrain level of detail is quite low 50 is far lower than i had in 2020 and the off screen 
in terrain pre-caching. I'm going to leave this to low for the moment because as we know at the moment the servers when the sim got released are really taking a bashing. So let's try and reduce the amount of data that we're actually trying to stream in. So the buildings themselves, we probably don't need to worry too much about the details of all of these. Let's leave these set to medium for the time being. Objects level of detail, again, it would be nice to have higher. Leave that for a moment. The clouds, though, the one thing that I do like about Flight Sim 2024's clouds is they do look very good on Ultra. So what change does this actually make? Do the clouds really affect performance? Well, if you remember, we've actually got clear skies in the sim at the moment. Let's just jump back and put some clouds in whilst leaving the volumetric clouds on medium. So as you can see, back on medium, we're back up to 60 FPS. Let's throw in some clouds. And there we go. So the clouds instantly, still on medium, lose around 6 FPS. I can probably deal with that. But how much does it affect things when we throw in an ultra setting for those volumetric clouds? And straight away then you can see the clouds really have taken us down. So it seems that if you want to have the ultra clouds, you're going to have to have a decent GPU. Let's try and find a happy medium then. Let's see what high does. Okay, so there we go. It has obviously given us a little bit of performance back, but it's still 15 FPS off what it was. Let's leave it on high for the time being. The next thing we'll do then is clear all the skies and go and have a look at some texture qualities. So the sky is now cleared, obviously, even with those set to high, we get back up to 60 FPS because there aren't any clouds to render. Now let's increase the texture quality. At the moment, they're on medium. And from our viewpoint, when we're this far out from any buildings, etc., the high resolution and super sampling actually doesn't make any difference. Now for me, the water waves, I don't do too much flying near water. I generally do airliner flying, so if I'm near water, chances are I've got something very wrong. The shadows, I'll leave the ray trace shadows off. Again, shadow maps, happy to leave those there. The terrain shadows, happy to leave these here. The windshield effects though, we would like to be set to high. That way we get the nice effect of the rain when that comes. Same with the cube map reflections. They look really good when we have them in the sim. So we'll leave that at 256. Ray marsh reflections, again, these can look really nice. So I will set those to high. Light shafts, not too concerned about those. Depth of field, that really is when we're looking at taking pictures and things, something I personally won't do, so I'm happy to turn that off. Same with the motion blur, we'll get rid of that. The glass cockpit refresh rate though, that's quite important for airliner flying, so we're gonna lift that up to medium. Character qualities, not bothered about the characters because I'm not particularly doing any of the missions. If you are though, perhaps leave that at medium. The traffic airport quality, I'm going to have turned off. Air traffic will be turned off. Road traffic, sea traffic, and fauna, I'm quite happy to leave those on. Now this is in terms of density rather than quality. If you're going hunting for deers and taking photos, you'll obviously want this set at maybe a little bit higher. The fauna, I'm happy to leave at medium. The sea traffic, doing lots of flying over oceanic airspace, stuff like that, I'm gonna turn that up to ultra and we're gonna leave road traffic at medium for now. Let's see how that's affected things. So even with those small minor improvements, you'll see that we've only really lost one or two FPS. Things are starting to look better already. Now, this is all well and good when we just sat looking at a sort of static, clear skies, clear weather picture of New York, but that's not what we're going to be doing all the time. Obviously, we're going to be over flying different landscapes, we're going to be close up to buildings, and of course, we're going to be in airports. So I need to have a look and see how we can improve those without sacrificing our performance. Okay, so I've now moved to Charles de Gaulle, which is a handcrafted airport by Azobo, just so we can get a feel for the kind of performance that you can expect at a larger airport and all of the textures. I've also spawned in, rather than just a little uh, easy 
easygoing Cessna, I've got the Inbuilt A321 Neo loaded up at the gate. I spent quite a bit of time playing with lots of the different graphic settings, just seeing it what affected what, and to be honest with you, there wasn't too much between each of them. There wasn't one setting which instantly made everything really, really slow and degrade performance. So it's not like there is a golden nugget to say this is the perfect setting. It will all of course depend on your individual systems. But in this video today I'm targeting those of you who have the recommended specifications as outlined by Microsoft and Azobo. But there is one really important thing that I have discovered. At the moment, we obviously don't have any weather again, just to keep things as a fair test whilst I was going through everything. The FPS is okay. It's uh, holding steady about 42, 43. And even if I sort of zip around um, Charles de Gaulle, which is obviously a very large airport, I'm quite happy with how all the scenery looks. You can still see some blurry textures, but that's nothing to do with the, uh, the graphics settings. That's just streaming the data or rather attempting to stream the data. So this is all fine. This is all well and good. Happy with that. However, look what happens if I find my aircraft again, which is parked at the gate down here. We can see my level of detail as everything starts to come back in. Let's just take a quick look at the aircraft itself and allow the FPS to stabilize for a moment. There you can see that's now dropped down to around 32 to 33. If I move away from the aircraft and just have a look far into the distance, well, you can see the FPS almost doubles. Come back down and have a look nearer to my aircraft. And once again, you see, even though there's much less on screen to render, that aircraft is really causing me a couple of issues. This gets even worse when we do this. Okay, so I'm now in the uh, in the flight deck. It's not powered up or anything, but just look how moving around this flight deck really affects the FPS. And the one thing that I can't wait for is the ability to download these aircraft onto our hard drive rather than having to stream them in because it does seem that the aircraft themselves are causing us a real problem. Outside the aircraft, looking at all the beautiful scenery that we've got in the new flight simulator, FPS is okay. The aircraft itself, however, though, causes some real hang-ups. I can take the drone camera out over Paris, get around 44, 45 FPS, but the moment we're back in the flight deck, that FPS almost halves. So definitely something going on inside the aircraft. Now, you can check this yourself, and I'd love to hear your comments down below. You can almost see the camera stutter a little bit. As soon as that aircraft comes into view, the smoothness disappears, and it seems to be the fact that the aircraft itself is causing some performance issues. Maybe they're not optimized properly, or maybe it's because we have to stream the aircraft as well as the scenery in Microsoft Flight Simulator at the moment. So again, I think this is just gonna be far better when the aircraft are stored locally on our systems. I then spent a few hours flying around in the sim just to tweak the graphic settings even further, trying to find that sweet spot between good performance, great graphics, because we know that we're limited by Azobo servers at the moment, but even so, smoothness is something that we all crave in every sim. I also managed to get rid of a few of the blurry textures as well that we had been seeing on the ground over the last couple of days too. So a few hours later, I've now got what I consider to be my optimal graphics settings for the sim as it currently stands. Be ready to take a screenshot. Here they are. So these settings delivered the performance, also the graphics, and if you recall the live stream we did yesterday flying into London Luton, it was a stutter fest. Not good at all. In fact, we ended up going around because I couldn't control the aircraft properly. That with these settings has been eradicated. I did a flight and a circuit around Luton. Everything seemed to work very nicely. So fingers crossed, we've cracked it for the moment. 
Now, of course, every PC setup is different, and I would really love to hear your comments regarding your graphic settings. Let me know if you found mine any good for you and what kind of performance you got out of those, but also what else you have discovered, what settings you are using, and also what kind of performance and how the graphics look so that we've got a good compromise and balance between the two. Thank you so much for watching and I really do hope that you have found some useful information in this video. If you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave a like and of course if you are new to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any future Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorials and of course our live stream flights. Thanks so much for watching, I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye for now.